Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline. And in today's video, we have a haul from the recent townwide yard sale that my town had. I am in Landisville, Pennsylvania, pretty much about 15 minutes from Lancaster. And this is a yard sale that my town hosts every Memorial Day and Labor Day. So if you're in the area of Lancaster, Pennsylvania during those holidays, you definitely wanna put that on your calendar. All right, so today I have a table of stuff laid before me, items that I picked up in that video. Some of this I might not have caught uh, in that video, but we're going to take a look at everything that I picked up. Well, not everything. It's a lot of stuff, but we're going to take a look at some of the more interesting pieces. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's take a look at what I picked up for resale in my eBay store. So if you're new to my channel, I ask that you hit the like and subscribe button if you like watching videos about what people pick up in thrift stores, yard sales, estate sales, whether we keep it for our own personal collections or we sell it online. All right, let's get started. So the first items I did film, but I wasn't able to use the footage because there was music playing in the background. They are coconut planters. I got two of them. And I thought these were fantastic. They are from Hawaii, they are vintage. Now the woman who owns them said that they are from the 1950s, which I could believe because it does seem like a real mid-century modern um, piece. I'm not exactly positive of that, but the thing that makes them cool is that the hull of the coconut is left on it. There is no hanging method that I see, so these are tabletop, but if I was gonna put these in my house, I would probably put an air plant in them and um, affix some kind of hanging, wall hanging uh, hardware on them. So two of them, they both have a $4 sticker on them, but she said $4 for the two, and I said, would you take three? And she said yes, so $3 for mid-century modern coconut planters, genuine coconut planters made in Hawaii. I'm not sure what I'm gonna get for these on eBay because I have never sold, have I sold coconut planters? I feel like I have, not this good though. And they are shellacked, so totally preserved, just wonderful. The next item up, I didn't comp. I don't think I comped any of this. So a few pieces I could have made a mistake on, and there were some games that I didn't pick up. I hesitated, and somebody came in right behind me and swooped them up. Those were Axis and Allies. If Again, if you haven't seen that footage, you can go back and look at the yard sale video if you want to see what games I'm talking about. Those two games probably would have brought $100 together, and the guy selling them only wanted $5 a piece. <laughs> it's the stuff that that gets away that haunts me but um anyway i picked up these little baby shoes they are a leather baby shoe very old not exactly sure what date they're from and i think the owner okay so these i picked up saturday the yard sales were friday saturday sunday monday i went out saturday a few on sunday and then all day monday and uh, he wanted ten dollars for them and I bundled these with a few other pieces from that sale. I bundled them with these baskets, these tray baskets. He had $5 for the two, so I got the shoes, the baby shoes, the baskets, and I also picked up, let me see if I can reach them, two of these porcelain relish dishes, and they were $5 a piece. And he gave me a really good deal. I'm trying to remember. 10, 20, 25. I don't know. I think I paid $20 for all of it. So these are what the dishes look like. This one is Germany. And let me see if this one is marked. And this one I can't read because I don't have my glasses. I think that says Germany again. Hmm, not exactly sure. but really pretty. Baskets are in fairly good condition, and how can you pass up little baby antique leather boots? An item that I did catch on film and put in that video was finding this stained glass 
beautiful window piece. My ring light is bouncing off of it. Now this is not true stained glass. It's not separate pieces of glass that have been leaded together. This is more like a painted piece, but I felt this was beautiful. And what did they want for this? I think I paid, they have it marked $3 and I did bundle again. Everybody was great about I'm trying to get the light off of it, about um, taking good prices, you know, taking my offers. So always happy about that. So I did get this, um, I'm going to call it window. You hang this in a window, stained glass piece or painted piece. And the same buyer had this marked for $5. I think this is a tree slice. I could be wrong about that. The woman who sold it to me thought it might be a cypress knees, which are the roots of the trees that grow in swamplands down south. That's my understanding of it. And But I think this is a tree slice, very heavily resined. I have sold these quite a bit, very heavy, but um, I feel like this one is really good. It doesn't have any cracks or splits. If these pieces have big cracks in them or any kind of damage, it lowers the value greatly. That's been my experience. So I did get this and the painted stained glass piece. What did I pay for them? It was five and three. I think I offered them seven, just a dollar off. And the woman said, absolutely. So this was a great find. Okay, so I have moved a little closer to the camera. I've swung the table to the side because the next few pieces are little pieces and I wanted to be able to bring pieces closer to the camera for you guys so I could show you the detail. So I was in the middle of bartering with a gentleman and he didn't have any change. I don't know what the thinking is there. Beginning of the day, town-wide yard sale, and you're a seller and you don't have singles or fives. Now, a lot of times I go through my singles and fives very quickly and I try not to have too big a stack of them because then it just gets bulky to carry. And I expect the seller to be prepared, but this man uh, did not have the correct change. So he encouraged me to spend the $3 at his table, which I'll always go ahead and take a look at what you know a seller has, twist my arm to buy more. And I picked up this little, I think this is a perfume, bottle. Now I'm not exactly sure what this is made out of. I think it is bone. Uh, ivory is protected so you cannot sell ivory on eBay. I'm going to put that I don't know what this material is because I'm pretty sure it is not ivory. I'm going to look up how to tell the difference between ivory and bone and go from there. If this is an ivory piece I will just keep it in my personal collection. I won't try to sell it but it has a little dauber. Is that what we call it? And the design on the side is like scrimshaw. But again, I don't think this is genuine. Genuine scrimshaw, you know, that's antique, a lot of money, worth a lot of money it can be. Whale bone, whale teeth, especially whale teeth, just beautiful. A lot of times people on ships, you know, whaling ships, carved patterns of ships into whale's teeth. If you haven't seen those, Google that, it's so beautiful. But this little perfume bottle, I think it's just a copy. And he gave me this for $3. And this little piece, which is a bottle stopper. To me, this looks like it's made out of jade and it is just a fist. And it looks like the fist is holding something. Again, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. It does look like it has genuine age. It looks like it's been re-glued. Just taking a look at it. And um, the stopper looks quite old. So I went ahead and said, can I have either one of these for three? And he said, you could have them both for three. $1.50 all day long. So the other items that I bought from that same gentleman were a couple of pieces of pottery, not really a signature or somebody that I recognize, but beautifully done. So I got this pot, gorgeous planter, and it does have a stamp on the bottom, which nine times out of 10, I can't identify. It, this looks like just a little rectangle. This is definitely professionally done with how beautiful and even, symmetrical. I call this an onion shape. I don't know if that's correct. You know, think of like an onion bulb, how it's narrow, gets very wide bellied, and then comes back up. That's what this one looks like. It is ribbed, beautiful glaze. 
So I said yes to that one. And what else did I buy from that gentleman? I think I got this green piece. Just a little pedestal dish. I love stuff like this. If I was decorating with green, I would have kept this for myself. That's what the bottom looks like. And I really like this finish. It's like a just a green, um, I don't know what to call this. It's not glazed. It's very flat finish. One of the local churches was having a yard sale in their parking lot and there were about 10 people with tables set up. One gentleman had a table and it said a dollar on anything on the table and I found two bags of little angel heads. They're made out of plastic and right away I thought to myself, this is definitely vintage and these look like something that you would put on a string of lights and these would light up. So I'm going to take out one so we can take a look at them. Leave a comment down below if you have seen these before. I have not. So it's just hollowed plastic and they are angel or cherub faces. Little blue eyes. So cute. So it wound up costing me 50 cents a bag, and I'm going to say there's at least 10 in the bag. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one has nine in it, and then this one has a little bit more. So I'm going to say about 20 angel head light covers, most likely for Christmas time, but I know people that decorate very Victorian, very, well, I don't know them personally, but I know they would look for this type of thing. So 50 cents a bag, absolutely yes. Grabbed these quick and I was thrilled to get them. So like I said, I am in South Central Pennsylvania and right near Lancaster in this area, we have a lot of handicrafts, homemade items, quilts, um, a lot of artwork, a lot of vintage because the people in Pennsylvania in my area, they have a tendency to buy a home when they're young and stay in the home their whole life. I just have to say that I love this. When you live in an area that's very, a quick turnover, very transient people clean out their houses more often here in the Lancaster County people are planted they stay so when they do clean out houses it is really good stuff and this next item I just appreciate this so much this is a hand-painted looks like an Amish house or an Amish barn I'm gonna say it's probably a barn with a little buggy a horse-drawn buggy The back is just dated 1984, and this is like a genuine bark frame. Just beautiful. The lady who sold this um, asked $2, and of course I paid the $2. I didn't ask for it for a dollar. It's a hand-painted piece, and I had a little chat with her, and I'm going to connect with her again and maybe do a buyout of items that she is cleaning out. So she has a lot of storage of her mom's things, all in tubs, and her mom was a big collector. So I'm going to touch base with her pretty soon, try to get that connection going, and see exactly what she has collected over the years. So little Amish painting for $2. How can you go wrong? On Saturday, like I said, I went out yard sailing too, and I saw this hat. No, it didn't have the mannequin. The mannequin hat is mine. And I thought, what kind of hat is that? To me, it looks military. It's got a beautiful tassel. I judged this whole hat on the amount of work and the quality of this thing is just amazing. Somebody made this. This is all hand embroidered with a metallic thread. Hope I'm not holding that too close. Look how good this is. My only problem is I have no knowledge of who wore this hat, you know, and why they wore the hat, why they decorated it this way. No, I did put it on my Instagram account, which is Lavender Clothesline. And a few of you said that this is the Portuguese flag colors, and a few of you said Russian. So I did try Googling that. I have an iPhone, so the iPhone is not as quick to give the app for Google search, you know, the little uh, camera. But I did try that, and I didn't come up with anything. But if you have any knowledge of if this is a military hat or a ceremonial hat, I didn't know if it was a fez hat. Fez hats are a little bit different in shape. I'm going to pull this off. See the way this has the accordion pleat? Let me fold it. And it folds flat. To me, that always reminds me of a military hat. I don't know where I get that from. but And the tassel is just stunningly good quality. So beautiful. 
The tassel almost looks like it could be a dyed or somehow a painted horsehair. I'm not sure about that. And inside, it is only marked with a number 24. I think that is the size. And what else does that say? Best quality. That's all it says. If anybody out there knows what this hat is, if you would leave a comment, I would so appreciate it. Always appreciate your help. And um, yeah, I picked it up. And what did I pay for this? $2, $3, something like that. This next piece of pottery might be a sugar bowl, I'm guessing. It has like a like an unusual handle. I feel like I've bought this before. You know, when you thrift as much as I do and you sell as much and you've been doing it as long as I have, just about, I think I'm in my 10th year, you feel like when you see something like, oh, I've sold that before, but it could have been four years ago. It could be that I still have it in inventory. I don't even know. But when I see something like this beautifully painted, this is a handmade piece and they wanted $3 for it, I will always pick up this type of item, all handmade. So beautiful. And what will I get for this? I'm gonna guess probably in the $30 to $35 range, probably closer to 30 but no, no chips or cracks, just so beautiful. I also found these bookends. You guys know I love good bookends. And what kind of dogs are these? Poinsettias, Labradors, Retrievers. <laughs> Those are all my guesses. I don't know. They look to be brass. I'm looking at the bottom inside. Definitely vintage. And what did I pay for these guys? Five dollars? Three dollars? Not much. But look how good these are. These should blow out of the store. All right, guys, I'm just going to do probably three more pieces, something like that, because I am getting ready to leave for Anna Maria Island, and I haven't packed a thing, and I'm still making videos and listing and photographing. <laughs> These days when I go away, it is truly a last minute prep and I've never been like that. Years back when I just worked regular jobs and I was going somewhere, I'd be all packed the week before everything and now it's just lists and, and trying to get my act together. But I did want to make sure that I put out videos while I was gone. So when you are watching this video, I will actually be laying on the beach at a Maria Island visiting with my daughter Fresh Blooming Clothing and her husband Bear and Roger might come down towards the end of that vacation but hopefully I will film a little bit down there too Melissa and I probably chatting it up but let's do a couple more items and we'll see what I picked up the next item is this gorgeous seashell quite a large size you can see compared to my hand no chips or cracks it's a conch shell but I'm gonna have to look up what type of shell it is and um, I will pick these up when they're big. Now, the biggest one of this type that I ever found was 12 inches, I think, across. It was massive and very heavy. And I was so grateful when it got to the buyer unscathed because the value is always in the condition with these and the rarity, too, for the shell. But the value is really in the condition. And this one is just gorgeous. I don't see any damage on this. I'm just feeling the edges. And look how beautiful this is. So what did I pay for this? I think I paid a dollar for this. And I'm thinking probably 20 to 25 for this one. The next item is an item that I picked up along with some candlesticks. And what does this say? They wanted $5. I did ask for a bundle price and the guy was great to give it to me. Just a needle point with a rooster. And is this Pottery Barn? No, this is not Pottery Barn. It is hc accents 2001 oh the boyd's collection so boyd's is stuffed animals right boyd's bears or whatever needlepoint pillows now i don't know if this is considered cruel c-r-e-w-e-l is that how we spell cruel or needlepoint i always put both things in my title for something like this okay at that same yard sale i also grabbed four candlesticks. I got two of the large size and two of the small. This is Pottery Barn. And even though these were a little bit big, I felt like the style was very desirable. To me, this is Brutalist. Brutalist is a lot of iron and metalwork. It has a very hardened look to it, very clean lines, primitive, minimalist, all of those 
um, names come into my mind, all of those keywords. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is good for Brutalist. And people do like that style. So I got the four of them and the Rooster pillowcase. I think I paid 10 for both. Don't call me on that, but I think that's what I paid. It's in the video. And the last item that I want to talk about is a pickup of two pairs of barely used wool slippers. I'm going to pull one of these out and one of these out. So the same seller was selling these wool slippers $5 a piece and they are just in great condition. I'm going to show you the name on the box because I don't know how to pronounce this. Let's see if I can get a nice big shot. Let me take them out of the box. Made in Austria, Geiswein, is that how we say that? Whenever I see a wool slipper like this, whether it be smart wool or, um, you know, something that's made from sheep's wool, uh, Austria, New Zealand, Australia, I always pick them up. Ultra Comfort, and that is the brand name, and it says right on it, made in Austria. So, booty slippers, and like a clog or a, or a uh, mule slipper. Always yes if they're in good condition. I will not pick up slippers if they're funky inside, if the inner sole is missing, if it looks like um, somebody crushed the backs of them, I leave all of those behind. But she told me, the woman told me, I only wore those one time and they were too big on me. So yes, please, I will take stuff like that all day long. All right, guys, so lots more on the table, but I wanted to keep this video short and just make sure I put out a video for you guys. Thank you so much for the kind comments and all of the interaction. I especially love when you guys all talk to each other in the comments and uh, we're just building a community of people that are really having a good time looking at what we're all finding. I follow a lot of other people and it's just a lot of fun. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. And again, go out and get what's yours.